Absolutely trust Mike McCarthy to take the Cowboys to the Super Bowl because when he takes them to the Super Bowl, he'll sit there and look around. you say, hey, guys, take this all in. This is the Super Bowl. This is the chance of a lifetime, or in my case, my second chance in a lifetime because he's been there before. And I always trust someone who's been there before. Acho, you just moved to L.A. How long has it been? A year? Two? Year and a half, sir. Year and a half. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you ever been down Slauson, homie? No, I don't think so. No, you haven't, right? Is that would like the meat. What do they say? Meat shot. Right now, know. keep your cred. Just that's, what do they say? The Put me on game. It's called swap meat. Yeah, yeah, that. Get meat yeah. shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, You're making my point. <laughs> if you ever have to go to Slauson Swap Meat or off Slauson, take me with you. You know why? Because <laughs> I've been there before. You haven't. You're going to go down there at the Swap Meat tomorrow. Y'all got some meat? They're going to be like, yeah, homie, meet you outside. That's what kind of meat we got. <laughs> Mike McCarthy's been there before, so why wouldn't you trust Mike McCarthy? And who is Mike McCarthy? Put some respect on this man's name. Mike McCarthy's one of eight, only eight, active coaches that have won a Super Bowl. Okay, so that means 75% of this league has not won a Super Bowl. But you trust them? <laughs> not me either. One of five active head coaches with 10 or more playoff wins. Let's talk about him in the playoffs when it matters most. I know there are a lot of slights for Mike McCarthy. Oh, his game management, his clock management. Oh, what was he doing those last years in Green Bay massages and stuff? He wasn't paying attention. Blah, blah, blah. Number one in playoff win percentage is who? You already know. Bill Belichick. Respect. Second, Bruce Arians. We're talking about active coaches. John Harbaugh, Mike McCarthy. And then tell me, is this coach, who's after Mike McCarthy, a good coach to you? Andy Reid. Ooh, Andy, y'all need to put some respect on Mike McCarthy, a man who's been there before, to the promised land, actually victorious in that moment, and will return to form with this team and take them one day to the promised land. So the biggest flaw in your argument is that you believe just because Mike McCarthy has been somewhere once, he can get there again. Mm -hmm. The problem I with do. that is... If you have been somewhere, journey somewhere once upon a time, but you do not go back for a while, you forget the route you need to take in order to you get there. You said I ain't been back to the hood. <laughs> I'll personalize it myself. Let's hear it. Um, to get to the village of Nigeria, where my parents are from, Isukwata, you fly into Lagos, the capital city. You know, used to be the capital city. See? And then from there, you can take another flight, and then you can take a little two-hour trip down back roads. Now, after going for several consecutive years, I could navigate close enough as how to get to this rural village. Mm. But I ain't been back since COVID. And so if I were to hop on a plane now and fly from Lagos to another city of Enugu and then get into a car, sell. I don't know how to get there because mm. it's been a while. Mm. So I'm going to have to stop and ask somebody who's gone more recently mm. or somebody with a GPS system, but, mm. you know, GPS don't work in the villages. And I'm going to have to get <laughs> some advice. Mm. When you see the goats, make a left. <laughs> when you see this person selling plantain, make a right. If you see the bush, you've gone too far. I'm going to have to get some instructions, Sal. Don't tell me that Mike McCarthy oh, still God. knows how to get somewhere he ain't been in 10 years. You cannot know how to get somewhere if you ain't been in one, two, three, four, five, six years, let alone 10 or 11. Wow. I do not trust Mike McCarthy to take the Cowboys to a Super Bowl. The game has changed. The terrain has changed. Ground has been eroded in the National Football League. The running game, the ground game has been eroded in the National Football League. So just because he's been there before does not mean that he can get there again. Anything? I got something over here, my man. You got to take me with you one time. We got to go there. Yeah, but we're going to have to figure out a streamlined way. I ain't going to all them places. <laughs> <laughs> it got to be a better way. I put five on it. You Let's take a PJ, man, go straight to the village? It, can you? No, I don't think so. Well, we ain't doing that either. All right. <laughs> we ain't going to get back. All right, here we go. Um, math was your strongest subject or in the middle? In the middle. In, in the, the middle. middle? In the middle? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me help you out. Please. It, well, it was top for me. <laughs> 510 coaches have been head coaches in the NFL in his history. 510. Yes, 510. 510, okay. Yes, sir. You know how many have won Super Bowls? You know how many people have landed in Lagos and then went two hours, if you say, to the bush That's and planting? You know how many have actually made it all the way to the village? Um, 34. Okay. Okay, okay. Mike's one of those 34. But you want me to have more confidence in someone who's never made it there versus a guy who's been there. Or you're going to sit there and say, well, it's been so long since you've been there. 
Do you know the climb? Do you know the grind that it takes to even become one of the 34 out of 510? Okay. Let's remind Acho, because you forgot who you are. Yes, and it's not just because of COVID and you're not going back home to the village. It's because somehow, some way, you've been in L.A. too damn long. But not on Slauson, you scary ass. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Oh, when you first grabbed the football, you were eight years young. You told me this yesterday. I know sometimes shortly thereafter, you started to have visions of grandeur. We all did, right? You get a football and you're playing with your friends and then you're like, yo, I'm kind of good at this. I'm kind of great at this. I want to make it to the NFL, right? Let's talk about the steps that it takes. Because first you think about, hey, I want to make it to the league. Then you're like, oh, I want to get drafted in the league. And then you start playing well, UT, all that. Man, I want to get drafted high. Then you say, all right, I made it. I want to make the team. No, I don't want to just make the team. I want to make the starting unit. No, I don't want to just do that. I want to make a name for myself. I want to make a Pro Bowl. I want to make an All-Pro. I want to win a championship. I want to be a Hall of Famer. Step by step by step. Let's talk about those same steps to Mike McCarthy. Out of 510 coaches all time, all of them said, I want to win a Super Bowl championship. And then you start seeing that number dwindle down. Oh, 510, I'm sorry. We got to kick 100 out. You ain't never made the playoffs. Let's kick another 100 out. You ain't never made it past the division around. They just keep getting kicked out, kicked out, until you're finally left with only 34 with confetti on them. But somehow, some way, between Slauson and Legos, you have gotten lost, brother, and not understood that Mike McCarthy is that dude. <laughs> Got to bring in Fox NFL analyst Greg Jennings. But first, it's time for some confetti for Greg. Let's give him a proper intro. Packers Hall of Famer, Greg Jennings. Greg spent seven seasons in Green Bay and caught two touchdown passes in the Super Bowl, went with Mike McCarthy, and will now be inducted into the Packers Hall of Fame next September. My God. Congrats, Gee. Greg. Congrats, Brody. Congrats, 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 Man, I man. appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. It, uh, it, it's definitely a tremendous feeling. But I'm gonna jump right to oh, this this question, Nacho, because I'm, I'm I, I want to chop your neck off, <laughs> the, and, and I, I don't want to say your head because I'm gonna just go straight to the neck because everything <laughs> else is just decapitated. So yes, I trust Mike McCarthy, hmm. and for the very reasons, and I'll add too that Marcellus is talking about. He's done it before. Hmm. We don't all of a sudden now look across in the NBA and say, man, do we trust LeBron to get? Yes, why? Because he's done it. He's proven. Do we trust Tom Brady? Yeah, why? Because he's done it. Do I trust that you can ride a bike if you've ridden a bike before, <laughs> even though you haven't been on a bike in years? Ooh. Yeah, why? Because you've done it before. Mm. Like, that's the first reason of why you would say, I entrust you of something. But this is what Mike McCarthy is all about. And this is why the Dallas Cowboys is gonna, are having success and will continue to have success. Because he's telling his players, this is what he always has said, guys, you handle what we put on your plate, and I'll handle the rest. I don't need you to worry about the media. I don't need you to worry about the, X, the X's and O's. I got all of that. You get it down. You go and perform. We put you in the best position, and you go and do what you do best. The same is being said to even the guys that are on his level, the coaching staff. He's not going to micromanage any of those guys. He's never done it. He's going to give them a task and allow them to be who they are so that they can be the best version of themselves so that the, the players can receive the best version of what they need from their respective coaches. And so when I look at that, he's handling every situation that you want him to. Does that mean he's not, he's not going to mishandle some? No. But at, along the process, we've all played in this league. We've all watched film. We've all played multiple games. And when you watch every single game, you do not have a, a, every single game where you come back and say, oh, man, I was great. Shoot, A+. plus, No mm. mistakes. Mm. No nothing. Nothing I need to improve. Sure. Yes, that same can be said with Mike McCarthy. Does he have areas where every single week he's going to be challenged and he's going to look at the film and assess his own self and say, can I improve here? Of course. But can he get the job done? Yes, because his resume tells me he can get it done. What he's doing right now tells me he can get it done. And what I've seen of the Dallas Cowboys and their personnel in the past and who has been there at the regime, at the head coach regime over the last few years, they weren't able to do anything. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden, I'm just to expect that Mike McCarthy can't. Well, they look a whole lot different. 
They play with a whole lot more confidence. And now we don't give Mike McCarthy any credit. And it's all the players. Look, this man has been proven. That's why he's in that position. That's why you're sitting where you're sitting. Both of you, Marcellus and Acho, hey. because you have to prove <laughs> that you can be there. That okay. Hall of Fame that take. Was, that was that Hall of Fame, fame talk, boy. Yeah, yeah. 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 My dog feeling it right yeah. now. Um, G. Y'all aren't wrong. Oh, okay, that's a start. Y'all are just inaccurate. Man. Yeah, you're not necessarily wrong, just inaccurate. Here's my <laughs> point, G, and here's my point, so. Um, Frank Vogel, resume says he's a NBA championship head coach. But just because his resume says that don't mean I would trust Frank Vogel to take me back to a championship. Luke Walton. Luke Walton, let's not forget, he was 19-0 and 0 when he took over with the Golden State Warriors while Steve Kerr was trying to recover from his physical ailments. But I wouldn't say that Luke Walton is a championship caliber or 73-9 and nine caliber coach, even though he contributed to greatness over the course of the Warriors' runs. Marcellus widely educated me, Greg Jennings. He does every show. He does every block. He does every minute. But specifically, most recently, Aww. he reminded me that 34 coaches have won Super Bowls. Yes, 34 yes, coaches. Yes, 30... What's interesting, Greg Jennings, is there are only 27 quarterbacks in the Hall of Fame. So while Mike McCarthy is one of 34 to win a Super Bowl, if he's coaching a Hall of Fame quarterback, is it Mike McCarthy who should get the credit, or is, his, is it his Hall of Fame quarterback? Because there are actually lesser quarterbacks in the Hall than coaches that have won Super Bowls, which tells me the actually determining factor of the success may have been your Hall of Fame future quarterback. Again, Greg Jennings, I understand your take. Oh, you just got inducted into the Packers Hall of Fame. You were quite literally being honored to give the take you're doing. <laughs> they might rescind your Hall of Fame noteworthy. I get all that. Marcellus, on the other hand, Woo! That makes sense to your take, big dog. Man, Greg, you want some of these ribs before me, or how's it go? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Dan, I didn't think that Acho would have to go down like this, fighting, blasting, and getting blasted. Okay. You brought up quarterbacks. Yes, sir. And I want to bring up quarterbacks as well, since I could beat you at your own argument using your words. Let's talk about the impact on the important. That's my issue with Deshaun Watson we talked about earlier. It's like, how is this impacting the greater good? Now, let's look at Mike McCarthy and his impact on the important. We don't have to talk about Aaron Rodgers, who played the most important position when he was in Green Bay. Let's talk about Dak Prescott and the impact on the important the most important position. Let's see Mike McCarthy's impact on Dak Prescott. Oh, my God. Has Dak Prescott had five 400-plus passing yard games in 11 games under Mike McCarthy? But then he had 32 games without Mike McCarthy and had just three mm -hmm. the previous two seasons. Let's talk about him under Jason Garrett, this Dak Prescott, and him under Mike McCarthy. Does the completion percentage go up seven? Yes, it does. Do the points per game go up six? Yes, they do. Do the yards per game go up 34? Yes, they do. Do the touchdowns go up six? Yes, they do. Does the passer rating go up 10? Yes, it does. You know why? Because Mike McCarthy is having an impact on the most important thing of a football team, the quarterback position. So no matter how you want to slice it, big dog, I'm sorry, Acho, if you don't want to give the man credit for him winning the Super Bowl championship, 34 of 510, well, at least give him some credit for having an impact on the important Dak Prescott. See, the problem that I have with individuals like Acho is oh, that they, they only believe that there is the expert not that there are experts. Mm. And that's what we see with Mike McCarthy. He nice. is an expert. He is not the expert, Ooh. but he is an expert. And I'm going to tell you how you're going to give him some credit. Because you mentioned Frank Vogel. Yes, sir. Uh, what championship had Frank Vogel won prior to winning the one that he did with LeBron James, the greatest player in the NBA? To my knowledge, none, sir. Oh, to my knowledge, none. How about Luke Walton? To my knowledge, none, sir, as a coach. To my knowledge, as a none. Coach, so no, we, when we talk about Mike no, McCarthy, he's already won a championship. Oh. You say, we, we can say he had arguably the, the most, well, let's just say he had the most talented quarterback to ever play this game, Aaron Rodgers, when he won that championship. So does he have the most talented quarterback in the National Football League this year? 
No, but top three, top five. No. Oh, oh, oh no, oh. no, no. Okay, now oh. Zeke is getting some more credit. Okay, awesome. Does he have <laughs> the awesome. most talented defense in all of football? No, sir. The reason why I'm making these points is because what we always try to retract from an individual when they are having success mm. are the very things that make them successful. Mike McCarthy's reason for being successful is because he's able to delegate. He's been there before. He's taken the credit. He's tried to own credit. Look at Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. The divide. Who's, who's that, who has it been? When the reality of it is, no one really cares when you're having the success that they had. Mm. And so my point, Mike McCarthy... He's in a position where he understands what he has. He understands what's at stake. He has the confidence to get them where they all want to go because he's been there. And when you've been there, you can bring that level of expertise, mm. even though you're not the only expert in this field. I love that take. Yeah, that takes worthy of applause. Damn! That takes Great. worthy of applause. <laughs> and I can't even disagree with it. I'm just going to pose a question. Is Mike McCarthy delegated, delegating by choice or by force. If he's delegating by choice, I'm with you, Greg Jennings. If Mike McCarthy is sitting there and saying, you know what, obviously I'm not a defensive mind, Dan Quinn, it's all you. If Mike McCarthy is sitting there and saying, obviously I'm not an offensive mind, Kellen Moore, it's all you. Then I'm with you, G. My head coach, college football Hall of Famer, uh, Mac Brown, he was the ultimate delegator. Right. I never saw him on a whiteboard. Ultimate delegator. Delegator by choice. But, Greg Jennings, my fear is Mike McCarthy, who did not handpick this defensive coordinator, he handpicked the defensive coordinator that got fired. Mike McCarthy, who did not handpick this offensive coordinator, Jerry Jones handpicked Kellen Moore to retain him, the same Kellen Moore that he also acquired, that Kellen Moore. My thought is Mike McCarthy is delegating by force, and that is very different than painting this picture of the brilliant Mike McCarthy that you're trying to paint, Picasso. Okay, so with, with the way you just laid that out, then why haven't the Dallas Cowboys been successful prior to Mike McCarthy's arrival? Why have, why have they not won another Super Bowl? Why haven't they not been to an NFC championship since, what, 1996? Mm -hmm. Why haven't they had... Why has Jerry Jones not been able to really pick the, the talent and pick the head coaches and pick the personnel that was needed to acquire such a fantastic Well, slow your roll roster. now, Grasshopper. Slow your roll now because the Cowboys are only 5-1. and one. Greg Jennings, if I'm not mistaken, you were on a team 5-1. Oh. and one. Oh, The that. last time Mike McCarthy started 5-1 and one and better, you were there, Greg Jennings, 2015, oh, I believe. Were you there? Not 2015. 2011. No. Greg Jennings, 2011, you were there. Y'all started 6-0. Not even five and one. Y'all started six. Y'all actually started thirteen and no. Greg Jennings, you know there we me, go. Historian, there we go. Historian. But what happened, Greg Jennings, in that first playoff game y'all played in two thousand and eleven? What happened? We lost. Mm, God, dog, God. He said they lost, Marcellus. I so did. He said they lost. So Mike McCarthy, who has had success like this before, actually lost in the first playoff game. But. The year before, Greg Jennings, y'all started 10 and 6, a measly 10 and 6. Y'all were a wild card team, a wild card. Y'all ain't gonna make no noise. Y'all a wild card team. Y'all should get bounced in the first round, but you didn't. What happened that year, Greg Jennings? Oh, we won. You won. Not only did you win, you won the Super Bowl. So as we won I look the Super at Bowl. it, Mike McCarthy isn't even good at handling success like this. Because the year he was this successful, <laughs> y'all got bounced in your first playoff game. But the year y'all were the under. Woo, 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 the underdogs, y'all won the Super Bowl. Don't talk to me about a man that I've yeah, played just see, as was, much as I you was, played for. <laughs> I was I was hoping you did this. I, oh, you know, we I, got I, another I do my trap. Research. I, 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 I do my research and uh -oh. I saw, you know, you uh -oh. these notes were somewhere down the line. So uh -oh. I knew that they would possibly come up. Uh -oh. So when I look at Mike McCarthy's situation in Green Bay, we were 10 and 6. We were hungry. We hadn't won. This was a new situation for all of us. We had never won. Mike McCarthy, even though he's won, he's in a new situation. You want to know what that situation is? He's being questioned every single, mm. at every single turn. Can he coach? Mm. Can he be the coach that even brings the Dallas Cowboys back to ah. this historic landmark of winning the Lombardi Trophy? Can he make sure that Acho actually gives him credit for the championship that he won and being on the list, the very small list, of all the coaches in the National Football League that have won a Super Bowl. So when you're questioned, 
when you're poked at, when you're pried at, you find your way rising above what you once were. And, and yes, the Dallas Cowboys, was, were they a successful team last year? Did they make the playoffs? No, sir. No, they didn't. What, what's their record this year? Five and one, sir. Do, would you say that you believe that the Dallas Cowboys are going to make the playoffs? Of course, sir. Of course. Of course. Now, are you going to just completely disregard all of the p controlling parts that play a role? Or are you going to just say Dak Prescott got them those wins? Dak Prescott got them those losses? Or it, does everybody play a role? Some people play multiple roles. So yeah. Everybody plays a role. My point in what I'm saying is it doesn't matter how big the role, how small the role, but the role that you play, the impact that it has will be displayed by the performance of your team. It's up to us to see. The season's going to play itself out. But from, from if I'm banking and if I'm betting, oh, you better believe I'm putting money on Mike McCarthy that he can get it done. And I'll take your money. Man, ding, 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 enough of this. And we got to go to the scorecards. And by unanimous decision, <laughs> the Hall of Famer, Greg Jennings. Ding, 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 ring girls, come over here. All right, I'm out.